Hey guys, I'm James Marsters, and I am answering your questions on RadioTimes.com. I did write a, what was going to be a TV movie, but it wasn't about the Scooby Gang. It was about Spike. Scooby Gang weren't in it actually. Uh, uh, it was about um, my my question was how do you how do you do a redemption arc for Spike without retreading Angel? You know, because they'd already did it. I remember asking. A producer, you know, what about a Spike TV show? And they said, um, wow, a vampire spinoff of Buffy. What would we call that? How about Angel? <laughs> um, uh, and so I thought if, if, if Angel is a mythic character, uh, kind of like Superman, you know, he's always in a mansion, you know, in front of a big roaring fire, sipping port wine, thinking about his soul, you know. Well, what if Spike gets a soul and this will be just right after Buffy. And what if now he can't kill people for lunch? He can't steal stuff to, 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 to get a new pair of shoes. Uh, maybe he's starving to death and he's homeless because he can't figure out how to survive in the world with a conscience. Um, and so I tried to flip, just go opposite of Angel. And so I, I wrote a story where he, he tries to be a hero uh, there's a monster that he really thinks it looks like an it looks like an old woman, but then when he attacks it, it unfurls into a thirty foot monster and just kicks his ass. Um, he tries to be a lover, he falls in love, uh, but she sees he doesn't have the courage to tell her that he's a vampire. So, so when the fight happens with the monster, she's there and she he, he vamps out and she sees what he really is and just dumps him flat. Um, but he does figure out a way and decide. He figures out a way to get a new pair of shoes without hurting anybody, without stealing them. And that's one small step toward figuring out how to exist in the world with a, with a conscience. Uh, and I, I thought that would be fun. Um, and it turned into a comic book uh, because it didn't get made into a TV show. So I was a little egotistical after season two. It it really gone well, you know, and, and we didn't have as much interaction with fans. The Internet was not the, as interactive and we weren't as plugged in with the fan base. But we knew enough to know that 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 Spike was very popular. Um, and so after season two, I kind of went, well, try to do the show without me, baby. You know, and then I'm waiting for the phone and it doesn't ring all summer long. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I watched the I watched the, the season three and I meet Faith. And I'm like, oh, no, they can they don't need Spike at all. They can they can create interesting, complicated, darker characters, spinning off their fingertips. They're just really good writers. They they're not they're never going to call me, and uh, and they didn't. And then they they had me in one episode, kind of like you know he was a popular character in the past, and we'll give him one episode just to get the fans off our backs, you know. Um, and I had that one episode, and that was it. There was no more plans for the character. But then uh, Angel spun off. Uh, into its own TV show and took with it uh, Cordelia. Uh, and Cordelia was the character in Buffy to say, Buffy, you're stupid. We're all going to die. Uh, and they needed a character to do that. And they thought maybe Spike would work. Uh, and that is the reason that I became a regular cast member. It wasn't really, uh, it wasn't wholly that the fans demanded it. Uh, they Buffy, one of the reasons it's a good show is it doesn't give the fans what they want it gives it gives the fans what the writers think they need uh which is sometimes painful experience uh um and i think that that's that's why it's such a good roller coaster ride um uh so yeah i did I, they need a new nor, new cordelia and i fit the bill uh so i didn't I, by that time by the time they called me i had moved on and i didn't think that i'd be playing the character anymore that's a great that's a very specific question uh, which brings up this, there's a, there's a thing that happens when you ask actors about specific things that they may not readily remember. We can often seem uh, like we don't care because we don't remember these, these things. Uh, the truth is that when you're working 12, 15, 20 hours a day and you're sleeping for four hours a day for nine months at a time, you get, you get tired on a level that your, your short-term memory evaporates. And... Uh, we used to play a game on Buffy because we went we went 20 hours quite often. We Most shows just go 12, and that's enough to burn you out. But Buffy never went 12. It was 14 and 16 was the norm. 18 was 
quite often and 20 was not unheard of. Um, we would play a game, uh, which was quick. We'd be at lunch. We'd say, quick, what do we film this morning? And there'd be nothing. We're like, I don't know, dude. I'm not even, I, I, I don't remember that at all. I'm just trying to get my lines down for after lunch. Shut up. <laughs> Stop bothering me. Uh, and so, so uh, there are some details that I don't recall. You know, my favorite is the, the, the one in, from Buffy that is my favorite that uh, is not the one I was in. Uh, it's the body. Uh, that, that, uh, that proved that the show, dramatically speaking, was strong enough that you didn't need vampires. You didn't need special effects. You didn't need magic. You didn't need any of that. You didn't need, need a soundtrack. You could just watch a young woman lose her mom. You know, and and uh, I just thought that was brilliant. Um, uh, I think I I I loved Fool for Love. I got to do a lot of fights in that, which I I I loved doing stunts. I probably did too many of them because because I have back problems now. Uh, and then the musical, you know, uh, uh, primarily because. Uh, as I said before, the theme of Buffy is don't give up. And I, the, the thing about the musical is we were all terrified. We, we all were sure that the show was being flushed down a toilet, that we were jumping the shark, so to speak. No one was doing musicals at that time. Um, most of the cast had a really good point when they said that, that uh, they got hired to be a one camera actor, a dramatic comedic actor, and they did not get hired to do musical theater they're not singers and 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 now they're being asked to do something they're not good at in front of a wide audience it's going to ruin their career and that's a really good point actually um i think sarah asked to juggle chainsaws rather than have to do the songs uh she said that would be safer for my career to cut a hand off you know and that's actually probably you know potentially true um uh, Tony Head and I were comfortable singing. Uh, I was already in a band and Tony was already doing his own albums. He'd done really, really successful musical theater in England. He, he played Rocky uh, in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Apparently he was amazing at that. Um, uh, I just didn't think the songs were any good. I just thought the songs were cheesy. I was wrong, but I can forgive myself because, because Joss who he, he gave us a cassette of him singing the songs. And Joss is not a great singer. He's a great writer, but he's not amazing at singing. And he can play the piano, but he's not amazing at that. So it just sounded cheesy. It was just some dude plunking out chords on a piano singing these songs. I was just like, what the fuck? What is this? You know? Uh, uh, but we were all wrong. But the thing, the reason that it's my favorite episode is, is, is whereas there were a couple weeks leading up to filming where we were all bitching and complaining and trying to get out of it and there's no hope and all was lost. I just, there was a point at which everyone stopped fighting it. And even though we were sure that we were going down in flames, we decided to go down swinging and we decided to, to try our best anyway. I was so proud of us. Uh, and we got to work. And, and so I think that for one episode, we spoiled Hollywood actors actually lived up to the theme of the show.